Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are joining us from around the globe. Uh, my name is Kevin Fitzsimmons, and I'm the chair of the F3 team and a professor at the University of Arizona and your host for today's session. Thank you for joining us for our webinar to meet the F3 challenge competitors. This is the second F3 webinar we've held this year, continuing our series that started in 2021. Our goal with this series is to feature the latest innovations and success stories in fish meal and fish oil replacements. As many of you know, alternative ingredients will be crucial to the future of aquaculture as we set out to feed a world of 9 billion people. Wild caught forage fish are a declining resource and without replacements for fish meal and fish oil, the industry faces a bottleneck. Unfortunately, many alternatives, or excuse me, fortunately, many alternatives exist today and even more are scaling up now. Our seminars highlight some of the most promising ingredients and technologies to help the industry grow. You can find recordings of our sessions and uh, at f3meeting.com. For today's seminar, we've asked the competitors of our current F3 Challenge Carnivore Edition to present their companies and products to you. The current challenges, challenge is to create a fish-free feed for one of three categories, salmonid, shrimp, or other carnivorous species. The goal of this challenge is to reduce aquaculture's demand for forage fish by advancing substitute feeds for the industry's biggest consumers of forage fish. All six of our F3 Challenge competitors are joining us today from around the world and across the three competitive categories. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know that if you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into the question answer box at the bottom of your screen and we'll address them during the Q&A session following the panelist's presentation. All right, so let's get started with the webinar. And our first speaker is Felipe Mayo, who's the commercial manager for Food for the Future, or F4F. Felipe has been with F4F since 2019. Before F4F, he worked in the food and beverage industry with Nestle and the salmon industry, leading sales teams and R&D areas. He's convinced that it, the future goes hand in hand with circular economy business models capable of regenerating the environment in order to establish nature's normal path. F4F is competing in the Salmonid category of the F3 challenge. So let's hear from Felipe. Hi, my name is Felipe Mayol, commercial manager uh, of Food for the Future. And uh, what we do here at Ed 4 f is that we are a scientific-based startup dedicated to transform organic waste into value-added products such as sustainable and organic protein. Uh, what we do here is that we grow and rear the black soldier fly larvae and we use this organic waste as, uh, as feedstock to feed this larvae, which is transformed into this uh, natural and organic protein. Our business model aims to democratize the fabrication of sustainable and climate positive aqua feed by working together with small and medium manufacturers to feed their feed, their fish and commercialize this feed around the different and other manufacturers, manufacturers who are willing to use this new and sustainable aqua feed. The product that we are developing for the F3 challenge replaces fish meal as the main protein source of the fish diet by black soldier fly meal. Black soldier fly meal is 100% circular product obtained from the upcycling of organic waste and rich in high quality protein as well as other nutrients. Our insect meal has a neg negative carbon footprint of minus 20 kg of CO2 equivalent. So. We know we are facing a climate emergency and food crisis. We know also that one third of the food we produce is dumped into waste and the decomposition of organic waste and its greenhouse gases are the main causes for the climate change. We know also that the solution is in, in nature and it's called the black soldier fly larvae. One kilo of eggs of black soldier fly larvae 
is capable to process 20 tons of organic waste in 10 days, which are transformed in 3 tons of larvae, who are also fed as a high nutrition protein to animals and in the future, hopefully, human beings. Our bio process talks about receiving organic waste by tons in our plant, prepare our larvae diet, which they feed on this waste, and then process them, dry them, and turn them into meal, oil, and fertilizers. Our meal is fed, is feeding today pets, fish, pigs, and birds. So now, a bit of our story and our path during the past years. F4F was founded in 2014. We started with a small plant, a pilot plant, developing the nutritional components of our, our meal and the black for the fly larvae meal. Then in 2020, we moved, we moved uh, where we are now today in Talca, Chile, uh, building the first industrial plant of uh, insect meal in, in South America. We've gathered a very competitive team uh, with multidisciplinary tasks in different areas, uh, such as science, uh, nutrition, sales, and managing. And now we have the interesting goal of uh, scaling our, our production, uh, reaching uh, this year 150 tons of milk and looking forward for 2023 in producing 70, 750 tons of meal. Um, this is a very big goal for us, but uh, with uh, projects and developments such as F3, F3 Challenge, we know that we will obtain the best uh, partners to keep on developing and keep on growing in this industry. So what we're doing is to mimic the power of nature using the most efficient type of insect carefully selected to transform this organic waste into the most sustainable protein of the world. We developed the technology to transform enormous amounts of organic waste into high value added ingredients for fish, in addition to the organic fertilizer it generates. We can recover up to 80% of the nutri nutrients contained in this organic waste. Then, by using a proprietary te technology, we create the optimal conditions for this species to reproduce and grow at an industrial scale here in Talca, Chile. All right, thank you, Felipe. That was very good. Appreciate it. Okay, next up is Zijian Pu. Uh, who is the CEO of Jiangsu Fuhai Biotech, which produces the Fatide product. Zijun has been deeply involved in the animal nutrition and feed industry for more than 20 years. He received his master's degree in animal nutrition from Zijiang University. He worked for Roche Vitamins and then started his business in Shanghai in 2001. He and his team at Jiangsu, Fuhai Biotech are committed to providing healthier and more sustainable nutrition. Jiangsu, Fuhai Biotech is competing in all three award categories for the F3 Challenge, salmonids, shrimp, and carnivorous species. They have feeds for rainbow trout, Pacific white shrimp, and largemouth bats. And we're excited to hear more about their progress. Hi, everyone. I'm Li Junghu from Fatide Biotech Company. My talk will contain three parts. Our company is only 200 grams kilo, kilometers to Shanghai, not far. We have a big manufacturing plant and a private wharf which connect to ocean port. We've got the certifications of ISO and the FSSC by SGS. We have two main products, enzyme-treated soybean and enzyme-treated soybean meal. I have the idea 
from 2008. The reason is simple. Excellent animal-based feed ingredients are source limited, unsustainable, and expensive, not only in fish feed, but also in other feed. We have already done some experiments of replacing fish meal or in caliber fish and uh, shrimps. This is the article published in Aquaculture Nutrition last year. In large mouth base, initial body was 18 grams. This is the formulation. Fish meal was replaced by fat hide from 56 to 36 percent. The growth performance have no significant difference. Peptide was good for immunity and antioxidant oxidation. Middle gut was thicker in fatide treatments. This was another article published in Aquaculture Research in shrimp. The initial body weight was 150 grams. The formulation fish meal was replaced from 25 to 13 percent. SGR had no significant difference. Body composition was similar. This is another experiment in catfish by a feed company. All fish meal were replaced by fat height. ADG and FCR were all good. Our F3 feed targets in caliber fish, large mouth base. This is the feed factory where we met this feed. The left is no more base feed, contains about 40% fish meal and the fish oil. The middle one use, using our fat hide to replace all of the fish meal and the fish oil. The color is lighter. No fish meal orders. The lighter one is our package. We sold our feed to this fish farm using flow grow to raise large mouth base. The left flow grow used no more base feed. The right one used our feed. We can see the right one is more fiercer. We checked the internal organs. Liver is bright, red, and uh, healthy. Yang, the manager, said the best fed our fat hide feed is larger. We invited three professors and over 20 aquaculture feed managers come to see and testing our F3 base. The meat is firm. The flavor was has no difference with normal ones after steaming only. <laughs> this feed is made by our OEM partner, Zhejiang Hanbei Feed Company. Our strategy is to provide core ingredients to our OEM factory to produce fish feed feed, fish free feed feed. OEM factories are available in China, so the production scale can be large. 
our biggest challenge. First, scanning, sending more products in China. It can help lower cost. Second, testing. We need more experiments. There are over 100 raising aquaculture species in China. Last, funding. Our future plan, we will develop high protein products this year and lower the production cost, develop and promote F3 feed to be the mainstream in the world, start from China. We have, have partnership with Tongwei, sell OEM trout feed in Qinghai. These are trout. <laughs> this is our shrimp F3 feed. The boss said our feed consumed quicker. Body were bigger. The gut line is very clear. People test our shrimps. The meat was firm. Flavor had no difference. Our mission is to provide energy for life. You are welcome to connect me by email. M E L B G E O G at gmail dot com. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Su Jin. It was very good. We appreciate it. All right. So, uh, just as another reminder, that if you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question answer box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll address them during the Q and A session. So, moving on, our next speaker is Bill Kramer. Bill is the president of Star Milling, and he's a third generation farmer and feed manufacturer, following his father and grandfather in the commercial production of chickens, eggs, animal feeds. His family has been involved in the fish feeding business since the 1960s when they supplied feeds for California state hatcheries. And I should mention, uh, we've been using it at University of Arizona since the 1980s. Uh, so Star Milling and the Schooler Company are partnering and competing in the Salmonid category of the F3 challenge with their feed for rainbow trout. So thanks, Bill, for joining our panel, and we'll hear from you now. Hello, my name is Bill Kramer. I'm the president of Star Milling Company. Star Milling Company is a family-owned business and operated by the family. We've been doing, uh, we've been manufacturing feeds for uh, four generations now. We've had nearly 60 years of experience manufacturing aquatic feeds. Uh, some of this goes all the way back to manufacturing steam pellets uh, back in the uh, 50s and 60s uh, for the uh, California State Fish Hatcheries uh, in the Eastern Sierras. We've also had experience extruding uh, aquatic feeds for 35 years. Uh, it was in the mid 80s that we put in the, uh, our, uh, our extruder. And so we've had uh, extensive uh, uh, practice doing that, starting off mostly with catfish food and uh, going into other species. We're a full line manufacturer of all species of animal feeds and pet food and we uh, specialize in custom manufacturing, also known as toll milling, uh, using either your formulas or, uh, or ours. Star Milling Company is located in the inland region of Southern California. Uh, specifically, we're in the 
in the town of Paris or near the city of Paris in the county of Riverside. Um, you can see us from this picture that was taken. Um, the mill is in the background there and our brand new uh, facility, warehouse and uh, pet food extrusion plant is uh, there in the foreground. Um, we've got great access to the ports in uh, Los Angeles and Long Beach. We're right along the 215 freeway and so we've got um, excellent access in the southwest and we've got excellent access to ports um, uh, near us for export. As you can see from this slide, um, of all the feeds that we manufacture, poultry is still uh, the uh, largest group. Uh, most of this feed is manufactured for uh, uh, commercial egg farms in Southern California. Equine is next. Um, there are a lot of pleasure horses in Southern California, uh, and so we uh, service them. Aquatic food uh, is also a very important part of, uh, uh, of our production. Then comes pet food. Cattle, hogs, and sheep is sort of a catch-all for all large animals. We do uh, some laboratory animal uh, uh, food. Uh, uh, this is uh, mostly extruded. And then uh, everything else is uh, mostly whole grains and, and some other feeds for minor animals. Now getting down specifically to aquaculture and aquatic feeds, um, most of our uh, our production is going to be for uh, warm water fish. Uh, tilapia and catfish uh, pretty much uh, share the two, two top spots. Um, uh, most of this production goes out to the uh, desert southwest. Um, uh, also we do some uh, bass and uh, barramundi. Um, our trout diets or cold water fish are much smaller. Um, uh, and that is what our F3 uh, diet is. It's a, it's a trout diet. Uh, and then we, uh, even though it's a smaller amount of tonnage, we, uh, we do koi and uh, ornamental. And this is going to be mostly uh, sack feeds. All the other feeds, uh, the tilapia catfish, these are all bulk feeds to uh, uh, commercial uh, growers. Regarding the F3 challenge formulations, uh, the uniqueness of the diets that we manufacture is the fact that they are all vegetable diet. There is no fish meal, fish oil, or animal products in these diets. These formulators were, for, formulations were created by our partners at 2xC and Summer Lake Trout, uh, done in consultation with Dr. Rick Barrows, who was uh, with the USDA for many years and now has uh, his own company, Aquatic Feed Technologies. Um, the omega-3s for these diets come from algae and plant sources. And the proteins that are used, uh, the vegetable proteins, are coming from fermented grain products. The astaxanthin that, that, uh, that is necessary in these feeds uh, comes from uh, microalgae. Uh, here's a great picture of one of the farms up in Northern California that we feed. And just a shout out to our partners, uh, 2xC, uh, who are uh, growers, Summer Lake Trout. Uh, They're also growers up in Northern California. And uh, uh, Dr. Rick Barrows, who helped us uh, develop these diets. As far as the future of uh, F3 production, one of the challenges is the high cost of these specialty ingredients. Um, and these high costs make these formulas only marginally competitive. Um, uh, our customers that do feed these F3 formulas have a very specific clientele that they reach uh, that uh, are looking for uh, vegetarian-fed fish. Um, 
What is going to help, though, is the new technology in algae products and fermented, gro uh, fermented protein products uh, that, as these continue to develop and come online, uh, should decrease costs of, of these feeds. Our, uh, our company, Star Milling, has been making commercial fish diets for years, and we, we will continue to do, to do so for years to come. Uh, we're excited to be a part of uh, F3 Challenge, bringing sustainable solutions uh, to aquaculture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. We appreciate that. Um, so uh, next up is Simone Sagan, who is the global R&D team lead for aquaculture for Dehus. Uh, Simone has worked and lived in Vietnam and Asia since 2014 and has experience with the diverse Asian shrimp and fish markets. Now with Dehus, his goal is to help customers grow healthy animals in the most sustainable way possible by, by providing a complete range of compounded feeds, pre-mixes, concentrates, and feed specialties. Dehus is competing in the shrimp category of the F3 Challenge where they are partnered with Entebel, uh, an insect meal company, and Phileo, uh, to produce their shrimp feed. So let's hear from Simon. De Hers Animal Nutrition is an international producer of a complete range of compound feed, premixes, concentrates, and feed specialties. We provide farmers with nutritional concepts that ensure maximum animal health and optimal performance, allowing them to feed their poultry, pigs, ruminants and aquaculture species every single day. Currently at DeHers, our global sales volume for aqua feeds reaches 1 million tons per year. Although the main proportion is represented by fish feed in our Asian countries, we are developing on shrimps and have big ambition to develop it further and faster. With the aquaculture market growing rapidly, in the meantime, we start to observe an increasing demand for safe and sustainable seafood. At DeHers, we work closely with the farmers to meet their demands and we understand that the development of sustainable aquaculture will need collaboration through the entire value chain. When considering the sustainability in aquaculture we must consider the fact that the bulk of aquaculture's carbon footprint comes from aquafeed. Finfish and crustacean species have traditionally relied on protein-dense feed sources like fish meal and soy to thrive, but aquafeeds can't rely on these ingredients for much longer. Aquaculture producers and feed companies are currently looking for new and sustainable ingredients that could revolutionize the feed industry. The ability to reduce and eventually replace marine ingredients like fish meal and fish oil without sacrificing farm efficiency would make the sector more sustainable. Over the last decade, the world has witnessed spectacular growth in the aquaculture industries of many developing countries. Nutrition and feeding play a central and essential role in the sustained development of aquaculture. Therefore, pond fertilization and feed ingredients continue to dominate aquaculture needs. The has been looking for ways to reduce our environmental impact in our diets and across our supply chain. In aqua, we have successfully achieved fish-free feeds in several fish species. This has been done through several R&D trials and now it's implemented around the world. Herbivorous, omnivorous fish like tilapia, carp, sporgaceous can grow easily without aquatic ingredients as long as you fulfill the specific species requirement. For us, this competition is a way to fast track our R&D development. After registering at the last moment for this challenge, we work hard with formulation and nutrition team to develop a good formula and then supply the sample for the F3 jury. Right after that, we got the opportunity to try our diet in a real outdoor commercial condition at Shrimp Vet Farm in Vietnam. Last year, we have received several requests from large farm or shrimp processor looking for this type of concept of fish-free shrimp diet. We believe these demands will continue to grow, so we took on the opportunity of this F3 challenge to answer those demands. The good news is we just finished a trial at Shrimpet Farm and even though we need to look more in detail at the data, we are very optimistic because we observe a very similar weekly growth compared to our standard diet. And furthermore, the Shrimpet team gave us a very nice observation that the F3 diet was more attractive than our standard diet. So we hope the farmer will be attracted too.
With those good results, we are now confident to start commercializing it in Vietnam, but also for some exports in the region. Currently the ingredients cost is slightly higher, but we believe the shrimp fed by F3 would attract consumers willing to pay a slight premium for these sustainable shrimps. We decided to include Entable and Filio as partners of our challenge as they are both companies expert in their field which is insect production and yeast production. We have developed good connections with them over the years and we do share some common vision when it comes to sustainability and health of the animals. When we registered for this challenge and look at creating this new formula we use our standard commercial feed as a base for the nutrients in our F3 diet, this in order to expect similar growth performance. Then after producing the shrimp pellets in our factory we could look at doing RD trial before launching on the market. Usually we would try use our global RD center for aquaculture in Vietnam to perform such trial. However for this trial we decided to work with shrimp vet as we were already performing one research in order to speed our development. To grow animal need nutrients and not ingredients. So in theory we can replace fish meal and fish oil for shrimp feed. But in practical it's a bit more challenging, taking in account all the key nutrients which fish meal and fish more bring into the shrimp. To replace the essential fatty acid com coming from fish oil, we decided to go for algal oil, which is very rich in EPA and DHA. But if we look at replacing the amino acid contribution coming from fish meal, we decided to go for four different sources. Two sources which we are very familiar and high quality raw materials is like plant protein concentrate and animal byproducts. But we decided also to go for two novel ingredients. So one is Antobel, which is providing us insect meal. And the second one is Prosaf coming from Fileo. This first trial on F3 shrimp feed won't be the last, together with our partners we will continue to develop this F3 concept and we are aiming to even go further in optimizing the recipes for cost but also extra performances. With our global nutrition expertise and RD center we will continue to review more and more novel and sustainable ingredients to be able to reach further in terms of sustainability and circularity point of views. When registering for this challenge we had in mind to scale up this project, therefore we selected ingredients already widely available on the markets with high potential to develop further, our ambitions is to introduce this product within our different BUs such as Indonesia and Vietnam because those two countries are big producers of shrimp, but we are also looking to sell to other countries through our exports business. So our biggest challenge is the availability of some ingredients for immediate use in Vietnam. Some ingredients require importation and with the actual logistic chaos, it's not easy, but we are figuring it out together with our suppliers. Ideally, we would like to source more ingredients locally from Asia, but at the moment, we still rely on some imported raw materials. Another challenge is to find customers willing to try and see the value behind F3 fed shrimp. We believe this will be solved when discussing with processing company which will be able to market this type of higher quality and product. As mentioned earlier, we are hearing the demand from the market about this need of sustainable shrimp. So we aim to also discuss with shrimp processors who are looking for those sustainable shrimps and we want to link the farmers and processors in this journey towards the sustainable shrimp supply chain. At the end the ultimate target is to supply the consumer with healthy and sustainable shrimp at an affordable cost. Thank you, Simone. Um, so ne next speaker is Dr. Pablo Intriago, and he is with the Feed and Pond Production Advisor for Empangran uh, in Ecuador. Pablo is an accomplished aquaculture scientist with, with experience in research and operations and a specialty in shrimp and fish nutrition and rearing. He's the owner of South Florida Farming Corporation and Aquaculture and Environmental Consulting Company. At Empangran, uh, Pablo has designed and implemented the successful operation of 200 hectares of intensive shrimp farming in greenhouses in Ecuador. Epigran is an integrated aquaculture company producing more than 80,000 metric tons of feed per year and harvesting 50,000 shrimp per day. For the F3 challenge, Epigran is partnered with Verimeris, an algae oil company, and they are competing in the shrimp category with their Pacific White Shrimp Feed. 
So let's hear more from Pablo and their progress in the F3 challenge. Hi, my name is Pablo Intriago. I work for Empagran and going to talk what means for Empagran to include Vera Maris oil in our F3 challenge. Firstly, replacing fish oil was not enough. For this feed, we have replaced all animals' ingredients, meaning protein and fats, both marine and terrestrial. Vera Maris oil is rich in EPA and DHA and can substitute completely marine oil. By eliminating all animals' ingredients, we minimize the risk of cross-contamination. Presence of potential pathogens such as Salmonella, E. coli, and Clostridium was much lower or non-present. Lack of deficiency in any amino acids due to the high amount of cereal was covered by using crystalline version. The supply chain was also improved and very important, the standardization of the quality of the product. The level of EPA and DHA in marine oils will depend on the species of fish caught and whether the oil comes from whole fish or its byproducts. Because Veramaris oil is produced under fermentation or culture condition, standardization is easily achieved. It also helps the pressure of the natural stocks it helps to protect the marine biodiversity and, in overall, the consumer. Depending on the species of fish oil, it could also have or accumulate certain amount of PCBs or other harmful type of product that could be transferred to the consumer. With all this said, it's not wrong to assume that the quality of the final product can be manipulated and guarantee a better nutrition. Finally, with the development, sale, marketing of this seed, and the distribution and sale of the final product, which is the shrimp, our goal is to become a sustainable brand with nutritional value. Thanks. Muchas gracias, Pablo. Um, so our final speaker is Boyd Wei, uh, who is the foreign trade manager for Dainichi Corporation. Boyd joined Dainichi, a Japanese feed company, almost 30 years ago. Dainichi is a vertically integrated company providing formulated feeds and farmed red sea bream, yellowtail, Pacific bluefin tuna, and masu salmon. As Dainichi's foreign trade manager, Boyd is responsible for importing feed, raw materials, aquaculture equipment, and then exporting the locally grown farmed fish. Dainichi is competing in the other carnivorous species category of the F3 Challenge, with their red sea bream feed. It will be great to hear more on their progress. So, boy, please. The Dainichi Corporation's head office is located in Ehime. It is the prefecture with the highest concentration of aquaculture in Japan. Our founder was a hard hat diver. In the late 1970s, Frozen raw fish was the main feed used by farmers. As he was diving on the pens, he would watch the fish being fed and the frozen raw fish floating out of the pens without being eaten. This caused him to start searching for a more environmentally sound feed and eventually establishing the first moist pellet factory in Japan. Since then, Dainichi has grown to become a mid-sized, vertically integrated aquaculture company with an annual sales of 182 million US dollars. Dainichi farms red sea brim, Pacific blue fin tuna, yellowtail, and masu salmon. We are also the first company to, to receive an ASC certification for our red sea brim. We provide over 14,000 metric tons of feed for local artesian hamachi and madai farmers. These fish that are locally raised are then processed at one of our two processing facilities. Dainichi globally distributes over 16,600 metric tons from 
our two facilities. Just like in the early 1980s when our company was founded, we realized that we need to continue searching not only for more sustainable raw materials, but more efficient feeds and delivery systems as well. The global population and the aquaculture industry are both growing. Both the annual supply of fish meal and oil is not. Due to da Japanese import regulations, we have primarily used marine based in ingredients from renders such as cannery meal. So, but this is the first time that we are making a formula diet that is both fish meal and fish oil free. Our target species is the Japanese red sea brim, madai, also known as Thai. The current average production in Japan of madai is approximately 60,000 tons. Most farm madai comes from Ehime Prefecture, followed by Kumamoto and Mie. The normal marketable size of this fish is around 1.5 kilograms. Madai, often called the king of fish, is one of the indispensable ingredients in Japanese cuisine and is also a well-known sushi topping as well. In Japan, madai have long been used in celebrations and such as weddings and birthdays to bring good luck, which is associated with its vivid red color and beautiful shape. Its status as a celebratory fish is also supported by the fact that the word Thai also rhymes with the expression Meta Thai, which means congratulations. The diet that we designed for this F3 challenge has a crude protein of 44% and a crude lipid of 12%. It is comprised of the following ingredients. 33% animal proteins which includes domestic chicken meal and, and pork blood meal, 19% vegetable oil residue, including soya and corn gluten meal, 18% cereal, 5% bran, and 20% of other miscellaneous ingredients, of which black soldier fly meal is a key ingredient. We are testing this diet against a normally commercially available diet for red sea brim. We started our field trial at the end of November 2021 with two pens. The size of the pens being used are 10 meters by 10 with a depth of 7.5 meters. The trial pen was stocked with 11,960 fish and the control was stocked with 10,709. The average starting weight of the test pen was 662 grams and they have grown to 882 grams. The controlled diet had a starting weight of 672.8 grams, and over the past three months, the fish have grown to 927 grams. So the trial diet had a daily growth rate of 0.32% versus 0.36% of that of the control. The trial pen started with an average length of 30.6 centimeters and a condition factor of 23.1 and are currently 33.4 centimeters in length and have a condition factor of 23.7. The control started with the exact same length, 30.6 centimeters as, as the trial pen, but had a condition factor that was slightly larger at 23.5. The control diet length is currently 34.1 centimeters with a condition factor of 23.4. There was a clear difference in the palatability between the diets. At the start of the trial, even though the fish were not spitting out the test diet, it took them a much longer time to feed. If poor response continues with the trial group, this is something that needs to be addressed going forward. Another issue was when we started the trial, the water temperature started to drop. It was 15 degrees when we began and it is now 13 degrees centigrade. So I am personally interested to see how this diet will fare as the water temperature begins to rise. Based upon the data taken over the past 90 days, both diets seem to be performing very similar. The daily growth rate for the trial diet 
is 0.32% per day, and the control is 0.36% per day. And the convic the feed conversion ratio for both diets is very similar at 1.27 and 1.26 respectively. As we continue this trial, our next step will be to conduct four tests and general analysis on the fish flesh, amino acid and fatty, <clears throat> fatty acid profiles of the fish, and most importantly, a taste test. As a company, we plan to increase the number of fish that we farm and process going forward, but even as we do this, we will continue to explore alternative feed ingredients and diets to help not only our red sea brim, but all of our species become more sustainable. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Boyd. Much appreciate that. Um, so uh, thank you for all the great presentations. Um, now I'd like each of our panelists to turn on their videos and briefly introduce themselves before we begin the Q&A session. And to the audience, please don't forget to type your questions into the Q&A box so that we can address them now uh, during this uh, Q&A session. So if everybody would turn on their screens and uh, why don't we have Boyd who, who uh, just went there last, go ahead and uh, start off with your introduction, please. So I'm, I'm glad that we, uh, we could be a part of the F3 challenge and um, look forward to uh, talking with everybody. Hi, everyone. All right. Thank you. Simone, please. Yep. Hello, everyone. I would be, uh, thanks for, the, for this webinar and uh, would be happy to answer any question uh, you would have. Great. Thank you. And Bill. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Good evening. Um, uh, thanks again for uh, uh, allowing Star Milling Company to be part of this challenge. And I look forward to questions and uh, uh, have, uh, have, have really, you know, gotten quite a bit out of this whole challenge and as far as what we've learned uh, in feeding uh, feeding fish. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, y Pablo. Uh, hi, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, happy to answer any questions. And uh, again, thanks for having me in this F3 challenge. Thank you, y Pablo y Felipe. Hi, good morning. Uh, Felipe Mayor here from Food for the Future. Uh, happy also to be here and answer any question my, that my the audience have for us. All right, thank you. Well, Felipe, since it's the latest early morning for you, why don't we let you go first? Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, we had, no uh, yeah, yeah. So one of our questions that we had was uh, in your use of the black soldier fly, are you having to uh, defat the meal or are you using a full fat meal when you use that into the uh, Salmana diet? Yes, we are, we are defatting the meal in order to obtain uh, around 50% of uh, protein in our meal. And um, the, we use the oil that we defat in, in, other, in other industries and in other applications. But yes, we defat uh, our meal. Okay, great, great, thank you. Um, so, uh, Bill, we've got one here. Uh, what do you think is needed to drive down the high costs of these specialty ingredients? Uh, and do you think that the consumer awareness could help uh, drive that? Certainly, I, I think, you know, the, the commercial production of some of these ingredients is just starting to come on. And uh, uh, as uh, some of the uh, uh, larger distillers and so forth of these grains start manufacturing this in amounts that make it commercially available, I'll, I think we'll start seeing the, the price of these ingredients come down uh, as they become more available. I mean, you, you know, this is, this is really new. Uh, some of this... Uh, has only been available commercially for the last few years. And so I think it's gonna come, come fairly quickly. All right, great, thank you. Uh, hey, Simone, here's a real practical one. Uh, one of the uh, people writing in said, uh, how can we get access to try your F3 product on their farm? 
Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, I think you can uh, contact me directly by, by email or LinkedIn at uh, Simon Sanga. And um, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this we are producing this feed in, uh, in Vietnam at the moment. So, but we we are able to to export it. So, uh, no worries to uh, to get to give you this F three to try in your in your farm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Zi Jun, uh, we had a question. What was the rate of replacement of fish meal for largemouth bass? I guess did you replace all the fish meal? Yes, we replace all of the fish meal, but uh, we use poultry meal and our uh, soybean peptide to uh, replace it. Uh, the percent of our products is about uh, 20 to 30 percent. Okay, great. Yeah, Thank others you. are poultry. Okay, uh, Pablo, a uh, question for you. Can you explain how replacing the fish meal, fish oil, improved the quality of your product and made the standardization easier? Well, uh, first of all, um, you can replace both fish meal and fish oil and easily using the you know, algae. In this case, we are using Beramides oil, which is made out of the Echisochitrium oil, which is very rich in DHA, uh, but um, one of the key issues is that um, uh, is to substitute some ingredient like cholesterol or the lack of some amino acids. You know, soybean meal is very rich. It's rich in lysine, but it's like in some methionine. Um, so by using uh, no animal ingredients, you know, you have to either uh, enrich your um, plant proteins by using crystalline amino acids or uh, mixing or playing with some enzymes. Mm -hmm. uh, the trick part is to, for instance, it's easier to do enzymes uh, if you use uh, extrusion uh, as long as you have a vacuum, for instance. You know, so there, there are some enzymes which are um, thermotolerant, you know, but uh, uh, you, you can play with some ingredients to improve uh, both uh, the protein and the fat. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, here's a question for Boyd. Um, did you do any lab trials before this commercial uh, scale uh, trials? Yes, we, we did. We did some lab trials or, or at one of the local universities with uh, trout. Um, and then that was before we started doing the um, counting to the F3 challenge. And as soon as that um, viability study was done, um, that's when we switched and went to the field. So, yes. Okay, great. Um, another question for uh, Felipe. What, was, what is the main application of the black soldier protein in the Chilean aquafeed? Uh, I guess, what is the amount that was added to the different feeds? Uh, yes, today, uh, the main application, it's in Atlantic salmon or salmo salar. And it depends if it's in uh, fresh water or seawater. Mm -hmm. The application goes from 1% in the in the um, in the fish in the meal formula up to 10 or 50 of the, of, or 15 percent okay great thank you uh and uh simone another question for you uh for the black soldier fly in your shrimp feed uh, is there uh chitin uh, uh there or do you have to reduce the chitin content at all yeah this is a question um Actually, there is a, there is yeah, there is papers uh, mentioning this chitin on uh, on insect meal is kind of beneficial for uh, for shrimp. So I think it's it's still at the early stage of uh, of the research on this. Um, but I'm not sure we really need to reduce it. Uh, this might be an issue if you are looking at very very high inclusion of, of insect meal uh, on the long term. But at the moment, we are still like. A, on the safe, uh, safe level of inclusion, also because we need to keep in mind the availability of insect meal 
uh, worldwide at the moment, uh, but uh, we don't see that as a problem uh, at the moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Zijun, we have a, a question here. Um, and I don't know, maybe this is this is a trade secret, I don't know. What type and source of enzymatic treated soybean meal are you using to replace the fish meal? I don't know Sorry, if you want to what share type of not. what's the question? What's what the type of the yeah, I guess they're asking what is the, the type and source of enzyme that you're using to treat the soybean meal? Type of the, of the edims. We we use uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 the question is what type of the May edims. Enzyme. So we Enzyme. yeah, we use most of the different edims to treat it. Uh, uh, edim, enzyme uh, uh, include uh, protein enzymes and uh, non-starch enzymes. Okay. Yeah, All right. Lots yeah. of different uh, enzymes. Everything okay. we do. Okay. And so here, the second part of the question is, how do you ensure consistency of protein digestibility if the soybean meal source, the source of the soybean meal changes on you? At this moment, we use the soybean from US and the okay. soybean meal from US usually. But it's the, the better quality. So we prefer to use the, the, the soybean meal from North, North uh, America. But it, uh, it doesn't matter in China. Yeah, okay. Well, I know the US soybean people really uh, strive to have a really consistent uh, supply there. So that, that would make Great sense. Okay, Pablo, um, any experience using natural or oregano oil in South American white shrimp or other aquaculture? I guess you do mostly salmon, but uh, anybody using natural or oregano oil that you're aware of? Yeah, we, we have been using uh, oregano uh, rich in carbacrol, you know, which is the active product of Oregon uh, mm -hmm. for a while. In fact, uh, essential oils, I think, is uh, it's pretty common, uh, you know, uh, for replacing uh, other chemicals or forbidden, anti uh, forbidden chemical like antibiotics. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, for me, it's not a matter of using these essential oils, it's uh, the concentration that, that you are using. No? A lot of people are, use uh, dissolve uh, very low concentration use dissolved products so i think that uh, the question is uh, what is the right concentration for the right stage you know the different stage during the growth culture great thank you uh, so bill we have a question for you here um how do we educate uh consumers uh, farmers, etc., so that they start demanding more fish-free feeds? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think it just kind of depends on the region. Um, the, the, the reason these uh, fish-free feeds are, are popular in California is there are certain populations in the San Francisco area and so forth that, that uh, already understand sustainability and uh, uh, are looking for not only fish, you know, that are sustainable, but everything they eat yeah. has some, uh, some sustainability to it. And so that's kind of where it starts. Um, after that, why it just has to kind of go throughout the population. I mean, really in the, in the United States, just getting people to eat fish is, mm -hmm is somewhat of a challenge. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not consumed in the United States as much as it is obviously in the Asian countries. Um, so uh, I, I think it just starts there. Uh, basic education, people are starting to understand that, that uh, we, need, uh, uh, we, we need to look at, at, uh, at these uh, more sustainable alternatives. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, and Felipe, we actually have two kind of closely related questions, so maybe I can stick them together here. Um, 
what is the nutrient composition of the black soldier fly and how is that impacted by the feed source, uh, the, the material that you're giving to the black soldier fly larvae? Yeah, the, the composition in terms of protein uh, goes hand by hand with the amino acid uh, structure. So it doesn't get much uh, uh, variation in terms of what feed, that, uh, what, what feed we use to feed our, our larvae. Uh, so it goes around 48% to 52% protein and around uh, 20 to 22% of fat, okay? So when we defat uh, our meal, it's around 15% uh, fat. So we extract around 5 or 7% per percent of this fat, which is this black soldier fly oil that we use in other, in other industries. Um, and how does the feed that we use impact? Uh, we try to, to, with all the different uh, <clears throat> ways that we receive and, and that we process, we try to maintain or stabilize the same, um, the same uh, diet composition for our larvae. So um, it's, it's, it doesn't affect much today. Okay, thank you. Uh, question for Boyd. Uh, how do you think being a vertically integrated company gives you more freedom to uh, try different feed ingredients? Um, well, since we are vertically integrated, um, basically we can go out to our, our pens and, and sort of test in, uh, different in ingredients and see which one works. And, and um, so it does give us a little bit of we don't have to go knock on doors and find people to, to uh, uh, try diets for us. We can just go out to, to our, our pens and, and choose one and, <laughs> and have a go at it. Okay, so. Great, thank you. Uh, Simone, uh, question, uh, which plant protein concentrates is to who's focused on uh, for use in its feeds? Um, yeah, uh, that's also the one uh, which can be available in Vietnam at the moment. Um, so we are, uh, as an R&D as well, we are always uh, keen to try new products. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, like what we see widely available in, in Vietnam could be like soy protein concentrate, uh, fermented soy, um, also like corn protein concentrate. We also see this kind of new generation of uh, re-fermented DDGS, uh, which can bring like higher um, higher protein uh, DDGS, like more than 50% protein. Um, so that's, that's the kind of product uh, we are looking at the moment because it's available. Uh, but we, we do hear uh, other product. We will try uh, more, especially at the moment with a crazy uh, raw material price. We will keep uh, trying new ingredients in our R&D facility. Uh, but um, yeah, so that's the main one at the moment. Okay, thank you. And, and Pablo, we had another question here for you. Uh, what is the level of EPA and DHA in the Veramaris uh, algae oil you're using? Um, the uh, Veramaris oil is about 60% EPA, DHA. Uh, from that is, I think it's 8% EPA. So uh, the question for shrimp is, uh, it's tricky because there is no many studies about if the shrimp requires EPA or DHA. So if you have a rich source of DHA as a diveramarisol, I think it's better because if the shrimp needs EPA, it's easier to, be, to convert the DHA to EPA. But if the, need, the shrimp needs DHA and you provide only EPA, uh, the shrimp uh, is uh, harder to elongate, you know, the uh, 25 omega-3 to the 22. So I think that the, the Bramari soil is a very good source for any species because of the uh, very high amount of D DHA. All right, so Zijun, um, can you speak some more about your OEM partner and your plans for scaling up? And, and what is this? step if, if you can share that with us 
who you partner uh, in China, there are lots of uh, aquaculture factories and they have some cap capacity to OEM for other people. Uh, uh, so last year, we OEM our, our feed in Zhejiang Hanbei company. Uh, that, and uh, we, we OEM some in Tongwei. And uh, I think uh, it's possible for us to to, to have more planners, it's, it's, it's possible. Yeah, well, that's great. I, we know that uh, Tongwei is one of the biggest uh, in, in China, one of the biggest in the world as far as that goes. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a, a great partner already that you've got there. Um, so um, let me see, I think we had another one here. Um, So this this is kind of for for anyone and, and everyone, I guess. Uh, we'll take turns with the answer here, maybe. At present, it seems that the production capacity of the of most of the new alternative ingredients is still far below the capacity of uh, fish meal. With the same instability and high prices uh, to improve competitiveness in the future. And kind of the second part of this is is how long do you think that the uh, these alternatives are, are going to take to catch up uh, to fish meal. Uh, so uh, why don't we start with, with Bill and then we'll uh, let a few other people chime in with their answers. Well, I think it'll, I think it'll catch up fairly quickly because what we're finding is um, uh, in feeding these these uh, fish free feeds, and these are total vegetarian feeds, the performance is is spectacular. Um, uh, in fact, some of these farms would feed uh, all their fish uh, these vegetarian feeds, except for the fact uh, of the cost. Um, I would I would say that we're probably five, maybe ten years out on some of this stuff. Uh, but as as it ramps up, and as some of these uh, commercial uh, products become more available to mix into the feed. Uh, I think we're going to. I think we're going to see it. See it change. Okay. Thank you, uh, Pablo. You want to answer that as well? Yes. I, I think that uh, there are many alternative ingredients which are already in the market, and and as I mentioned before, uh, many ingredients or plant uh, proteins ingredients can be improved by using uh, enzymes. Um, we have been uh, manufacturing um, fish free um, feed animal, uh, in general animal protein uh, free for shrimp for a, for a while. And uh, we don't see any problem. Uh, so I think that um, uh, they are already available, uh, and uh, yes, uh, uh, insect protein will take a while for mass production, but I think that uh, there are a lot of ingredients available. Uh, the, you have DDGS, you have a, mm -hmm. a cotton seed meal, you have a, a corn gluten meal. Uh, for me, is uh, the using of uh, altern other alternative ingredients or, or boosters like enzymes or, or other products that can enhance or improve the digestibility of these uh, alternative ingredients. Okay, great. And, and Simone, we know Dehus has been uh, looking at this for, for many years already. Uh, what, what's your take on it? Um, I think it's, it's also like, um, like the work we've been doing, for instance, is to really know deeply each ingredient, how they perform in, in, in fish, shrimp. So through digestibility trials, so we know, for instance, each uh, digestible energy, digestible amino acids coming from, uh, from a lot of different ingredients. So it gives us already a lot of flexibility to just replace uh, fish meal if we want. Um, after it's like not all the fish meal are, uh, are unsustainable as well. Uh, we do see like quite stable production out of South America. 
uh, you have all those uh, byproduct fish meal, which can be uh, also kind of a good source. Another issue we, we foresee uh, for those ingredients would be like uh, some antibiotic residue, for instance, on some mass, uh, mass production of like byproducts of aquaculture uh, filleting uh, production. Um, after animal byproducts is also a nice uh, uh, source of protein, uh, we think. Uh, but the same issue uh, goes for antibiotic residue. Uh, in Asia or Europe or America, we do uh, find some antibiotic residue uh, on some batch. So that's, uh, that's the main concern. And that's why we think, uh, I think what Pablo was mentioning, like uh, some of like going for more plant ingredients can be safer on many things, on contaminants. Um, and yeah, uh, also as Pablo mentioned about like the enzymes, when you know exactly how your enzyme works, uh, you can improve a lot. Uh, your nutrients, uh, and then you make a more stable uh, formula. So it's really going very in detail to know like how each ingredients will uh, will bring which nutrients in your formula, and then formulate with nutrients and not ingredients at all. Then you will be quite stable and uh, and uh, yeah, novel ingredients are nice. Uh, I do. I don't think insect meal will uh, will be one million ton of production uh, in the next five years. I hope it's it's really taking off. Uh, we we discussed with few of them, and they are really ramping up production. I think single cell protein is something very potential as well. Whatever yeast or, or probiotics, uh, like bacteria mass production stuff like this, it can be very interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, it needs to to happen over the next few years. Uh, I. One of the main challenge for, for this trial for, for us is more like to replace uh, fish oil because like you cannot really have like sustainable, uh, like you can have sustainable fish oil from Peru or, or Chile. Uh, but it's, I think at the moment, algal oil production. So mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, other suppliers are doing a great job to, to ramp up production. Uh, but it's still like I think the limited factor uh, to go on full scale uh, to replace fish oil. But I think they are wo really working on it, and we see the yeah the availability, the price coming down for for those ingredients as well. So it's it's really nice to see, and it's yeah. a nice product. Thank you, and and Boyd, uh, I think yours was probably the most uh, diverse of any of the diets of the various. Uh, uh, alternatives you were using in, in your uh, Red Sebring uh, formulation. Uh, what's your take on, on this of, of how fast these are coming online and uh, uh, be able to uh, really replace uh, vast amounts of fish meal, fish oil? Um, like everyone has, has said, I, I think everyone's ramp ramping up. It will, um, it, it will take take time, but then one thing that no one has mentioned is that the price of fish meal and fish oil keep, keep going yeah. up. And as long as that keeps going up, it's yeah. gonna make these other alternative ingredients easier and easier and easier to use. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's gonna be a, a, a several step process where you're not just completely switching overnight, you're gonna be using fish oil and fish meal and along with these alternative ingredients and adding them step by step. Mm -hmm. and then, it's the um, it's the chef that's finally being able to use various different ingredients and add new herbs and tastes and things like that to make a better diet uh, or, or food, if you will. So at least that that's my my take on it. Um, so um, unfortunately for us, um, we can't just import chicken meal or pork meal from uh, other countries. We have to use domestic uh, materials. So we're kind of um, uh, tied to using um, a little bit of marine um, um, products um, until we can fully replace with uh, with other other ingredients. Okay. It, it'll it'll get there. All right. Well, good analogy. Thank you. Uh, we'll let Felipe have the last uh, take on this. Yeah, I was I was going to mention same as Boyd that. Um, current uh, uh, food proteins or food sources will keep going higher and higher and, and they depend on natural natural resources. So, so all these alternative proteins uh, with the sustainable and the, and the low uh, carbon footprint uh, value added, it's gonna gain much more market and, and sooner than, than we think. That's, that's what we think here. 
and what we've seen. Okay, good. Um, Felipe, we just have another quick question for you. Why did uh, F4F pick uh, black soldier fly as opposed to any of the other insects that people are using now for insect meal? Yeah, what what we've what we've we've seen and what we say is that the black soldier fly larva is much more efficient in terms of transforming food waste into protein. Its life cycle process it's shorter, so it's we could say it's or it's cheaper to to grow, and um, and it uh, and it's less it's uh, it's less less selective in terms of which waste. Uh, you you use so uh, in terms of uh, a business model, it's 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 better and it's uh, it's much more efficient than other insects. Okay, good. Uh, Simone, here's a question for you: uh, Did you measure or, or observe any changes in the feed stability in water uh, from your uh, control diet and the uh, F three diet? So that, that was uh, some of the concern uh, before making the, uh, the production, uh, but um, we didn't observe any difference. So it's uh, all the sample passed uh, our standard of uh, quality control. So it's, it's basically the same water stability as what we have um, for our standard diet in Vietnam. So it's, it's only re also related to, to the way you cook uh, in your factory. So it's uh, shrimp process like to make a shrimp feed the processing is quite uh, can be quite complex and uh, some technology out there to, to improve the cooking and make, make sure that your starch is well dressed nice uh, to make a nice pellet okay especially in vietnam where where we know that the as a physical aspect of, of the of shrimp feed is very very important okay great great um all right, so we're, we're gonna have one more kind of final question here for, for everybody. Um, and that is, uh, what volume have the contestants achieved thus far? And what is your expectation for the future of fish free feed uh, going forward in the contest? So uh, who wants to take that one first? How about the, uh, Bill? Well, you know, our, our volume is pretty small, uh, obviously about a, about 100 tons in a, in a year, uh, which is pretty minor. But uh, what we've learned through it is the fact that this is possible. You can make a vegetarian diet that that uh, that feeds trout very very well, and you get a very good fish and very good conversion. Um, what was the what was the other part of that question? Uh, what is your expectation for the future of these feeds, fish free feeds? Well, I I I I think it's going to go forward very well. Um, I mean, most of our fish feeding is uh, with warm water fish, and most warm water fish already eat a. a fairly close to a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference there is just the fact that, that in order to make the, the feed commercially uh, available at a, at a good price, some, uh, some fish meal has to be used, but you know, we're starting to work most of that out of the warm water fish diets anyway. Uh, just as Boyd has said, I mean, you know, these uh, fish, uh, fish meals uh, continue to go up in price. So uh, I, I think you'll you'll see a you'll see a, a progressive change as, as time goes on as as the prices increase for these these fish meals. Okay, thank you, uh, Boyd. Why don't you go next? Let's see. Yeah, we've we've done just about five tons, um, so it's a, not a great great amount, but um. um uh, again, um, it's we've proven that the, the diet works. Um, yep. I think we need to work on palatability. Um, mm -hmm. That was the issue I, I had. Um, still do a, a taste test on the, the, the finished uh, the fish in and of itself, um, and then come back with something that can be um, marketable as a commercial diet uh, with current prices. All right, good. 
Well, we, we've actually heard that from some other folks. So uh, we, we may be doing palatability as, as a future. So uh, we'll keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. Felipe, please. Uh, yeah, our, our volumes are also not, not too high at the moment. We're in the, in the trial stage with uh, Atlantic salmon and, and now with trout, but we are aiming to, to provide uh, medium and small um, uh, trout farmers. So we're, we're aiming to obtain uh, over 20 or 50 ton in a year uh, after, after finalizing the trials, which, which would be around April or May. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pablo. Yes, um, because we are an integrated uh, group uh, and I'm not sure about the exact amount, but it's over 5,000 metric tons uh, of pure vegetarian uh, feed for shrimp. I think it's uh, very close to 8,000 metric tons. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, over 3,000 hectares of uh, of uh, our own farms, plus we feed, uh, I don't know, like uh, 20,000 hectares of clients. So we have pretty uh, a lot of room for testing. So we already harvest all that uh, vegetarian shrimp. Uh, let's call it vegetarian shrimp. So the hard part for us is really is to uh, market that and uh, uh, trying to get uh, uh, bonus price, let's mm -hmm. say, and, and convince the, the, the client or the customer that, you know, they have a, a shrimp with the, the same taste and uh, more, but more sustainable. So uh, for me, that is the hardest part, you know? Yeah. Um, Pablo, I know at, at one time Epigran was also doing quite a bit of tilapia. Uh, they done any uh, F3 diets essentially for, for tilapia? Uh, to be honest, we don't use any animal uh, protein or animal uh, oil in tilapia for I don't know the last eight years or ten years, and and no, it's not because to because we wanted to do you know like F three, it's because it's cheaper. Yeah. All right. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we love to hear. Uh, Simone. Uh, yeah. So as, I, as we mentioned on the video, so we, we register a bit uh, at the end, I think the last day uh, before the, the challenge close, we, we put our, our, our candidature. Uh, so we, we haven't sold uh, officially like much, uh, like any volume uh, on the market because we wanted to make sure that the diet performs. So uh, we, do, we do know that on fish and uh, we, we have been able to replace uh, fish meat and fish oil. But on shrimp, uh, it's it's a sensitive market in, in Vietnam, so it's like we don't want to make any mistakes uh, before launching the product. So now we know that the diet performs good. So now it's uh, for time for us to 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 sell the product. Um, but our ambition is to yeah to when we started this challenge, we wanted to to keep uh, like the slight premium on the on the on the formula as as minimum as possible. So we are talking about only few percent. Uh, of cost increase, um, mm -hmm. and it's uh, and we and we believe like having this kind of strategy is like we are may, may be able to sell like quite a large part of our strength volume uh, with this type of diet. So without uh, for the end consumer to pay a lot more money. Uh, so now our our strategy now is to to go for the for the shrimp processing companies in Vietnam and mm -hmm. and see their interest uh, and see. Uh, if if they will able to source more product on this uh, F3 fed shrimp, and uh, and then we we take it from there. Um, the future we also wanted to to participate in this challenge to challenge ourselves to to work on this topic to be more on, on more like sustainability uh, and R and D. Uh, and we and hearing like uh, what we what we hear as well on, uh, from the other participants, it's like at the moment our diet is not vegetarian because we still have. Uh, animal byproduct in it, but it's also the next. Uh, we do have the formula, another formula of F3 at the moment in uh, in our system. It's slightly more expensive, so we are more looking at eight, ten percent more expensive on uh, on on formulation cost without any animal byproduct. So we do want to 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 work with Entobel, Fileo yeah. uh, on this in the in the future to see if if this performs the same, if we can even reduce costs. 
uh, and and then like market both type of product because Europe might be looking for more uh, let's say vegetarian pure vegetarian diet. Uh, US is more uh, keen on the animal byproducts, so it's um, it can be two different markets, but we we see the potential there. Okay, and Zijun, we'll have you last word here. Thank you very much. I, we have some uh, successful experience in the last year in some spaces. And this year, some other customers, they use our ingredients in turtles, eels, uh, more species. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, we were enlarge our scale this year in East China and uh, even in Guangdong, in South China. Uh, I think uh, soybean uh, have a big uh, vo can volume to provide. So it has a possibility to replace fish meal in the future. Uh, because some, I think some, some ingredients are the the sauce are, are very small, so it's difficult to, 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 to make, make a big. So, uh, yes, so we were, we were have more experience this year. And uh, we, are, we are have more pores to uh, fish to feed this year. Yeah, we have, uh, we, we, we start work now. Great, thank you. Um, so thank you all of you. That was uh, uh, really, really helpful for, for all of us. And um, I, I think all of the contestants and, and your partners know that one of our main uh, goals in, in all of F3 initiative is to uh, get our contestants a lot of recognition uh, in the wider community. Uh, so just to let you know, we had uh, a little over 11,000 people listening in uh, today. Uh, so you were able to speak to uh, quite an audience today um, uh, on, on our different platforms. Uh, and if anyone would like to connect with, with any of you, the F3 competitors, uh, and, and inquire about buying your F3, feed, you can find their contact information on our website at f3challenge.org under the participants, or you can email us at f3fishfreefeed at gmail.com and, and we'll connect you uh, to, to our speakers this evening. Um, uh, also that this uh, is being recorded and will be uh, put on the website as well. So in addition to the 11,000 people who heard it uh, today, that uh, some more will be able to listen uh, into the future. Um, our next webinar is going to be Synthetic Biology, Customizing Nutrients for Aquafeeds, and will be in partnership with SynBioBeta. And we'll be highlighting the latest innovations in synthetic biology technology for aquaculture. That webinar will take place on May 19th at 5 a.m. Uh, GMT or 1 p.m. Beijing time. Uh, and you can join our mailing list at f3.com, uh, f3meeting.com, excuse me, for more information on that event. Uh, so thank you again for joining us on our seminar today. Before you go, please take a couple of minutes to watch our closing video from the F3 team. So good night. Good morning, good afternoon to everybody listening in. Thank you.